Today's episode is brought to you by Keeps. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash simple history or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Why were sailors so unhealthy? 16th to the 18th century. As the British Empire spread across the globe in the 16th and 17th centuries, a whole new set of challenges started to emerge, like how to live at sea for many months without letting most of your sailors get sick or die. From the 16th to the 18th century, the entire world went through great political and cultural transformations due to the exchanges happening through sea trade. The sea had become the main scenario of world politics. As longer and longer voyages became more common, sailors started to become afflicted with a strange and horrible disease. It would appear after just a few weeks at sea, and at first it was just an unexplained weakness and fatigue, accompanied by a slight fever and an increased irritability. But if the condition continued, after a few months, it would become increasingly more severe, as a sailor's gums would become sore and start to bleed, followed by tooth loss as well as agonizing headaches. The sailor's joints would then swell up and become painful and tender. Their eyesight would also deteriorate, their vision becoming blurred and sensitive to light. Then jaundice would set in, where the skin and eyes start to yellow, and soon after that, the victim would fall into a coma and die a short time later. But oddly, if they made it back to land and were given the chance to rest and recuperate, they would mysteriously make a full and speedy recovery. Such it was that a lot of sailors had the disease many times in their lives. At this stage, the commonly held view was that scurvy, as it was being called, was a digestive imbalance caused by the hardships of life at sea and the naval diet. Others believed it was caused by excess of black bile or laziness. The standard Royal Navy diet at the time lacked fresh meat, and the crew had to rely upon salted pork and beef for their protein, along with whatever fish and turtles they could catch. Their weekly ration during the 18th century consisted of six pounds of salted meat, which was the equivalent of the meat from 24 quarter pound burgers. Along with this were small quantities of butter and cheese and a large amount of biscuit and oatmeal, totaling around 10 pounds. The biscuit was called hardtack and was inexpensive, being made from flour, water, and salt. Its major drawback was that it was tasteless and prone to bug infestations like weevils, a small, ugly, snout-nosed insect. There was also a daily pint of beer per man along with a watered-down shot of rum. If times were tough, rats would be caught and eaten, which had the added bonus of keeping the onboard vermin population under control. But most importantly, fresh fruit and vegetables were only served for the first part of the voyage as they would eventually spoil. So for most of these long trips, the sailors' diet completely lacked any source of vitamin C. So to try and cure scurvy, the Royal Navy introduced a number of measures, like increasing the beer ration, introducing the eating of sauerkraut, which was a fermented cabbage, and issuing a sugary drink made of malt and a thing called wort, which was the side product of the brewing process. None of these were particularly effective. In fact, one of these so-called cures was actually extremely dangerous to one's health. It was called the elixir of vitriol, consisting of sulfuric acid taken with alcoholic spirits that were infused with a mixture of various spices and mixed with barley water. Soon, this mysterious affliction was causing such a problem on long-distance voyages that the Royal Navy was forced to take action, because up to 50% of those sick with scurvy died in the beginning of the age of sail, and still one in seven sick sailors died of it in the 18th century. Around this time, it was not just the fleets of the great European powers that were suffering from the ravages of scurvy. Pirates, who were a major world problem in those days, also suffered greatly. In some ways, pirates were hit even harder by scurvy, as they were limited by where they could pick up fresh supplies as they were outlaws. To aid them was punishable by death. So they were often forced to rely on food supplies from the ships they plundered, which often meant their diet was even more deficient in vitamin C than the likes of the British or French navies. And to complicate matters further, pirate ships rarely carried any kind of doctor on board. So pirate ships often relied on good fortune when it came to injury or disease, and a man handy with a saw if it was time for an amputation. The famous pirate Blackbeard was unusual for his time and insisted on keeping a well-stocked medicine chest on board with a selection of herbs, assorted knives, razors, cauterizing irons, cupping glasses, stitching quill, and needles. Then, in 1747, a Scottish doctor named James Lind aboard the British warship HMS Salisbury, in his experiments, discovered a link between a sailor's poor diet at sea and the true cause of scurvy, and that it might be cured by eating fresh citrus fruit. 
but his findings were overshadowed by his work on clinical medical experiment methods and the importance of good hygiene, causing his work on scurvy to be overlooked. In 1793, the much-respected Rear Admiral Gardner insisted, after being advised by the physician Gilbert Blaine, that some of his ships heading on a four-month voyage to India carry lemon juice to be issued every day to the crew. Gardner had seen firsthand how ineffective the so-called cures for scurvy were, but had been impressed by how the Spanish Navy was getting the problem under control by regular doses of lemon juice. There was much astonishment when his small fleet of ships arrived in India, and not a single crew member had gone down with scurvy the entire trip, something completely unheard of at the time on such a long voyage. The Royal Navy Sick and Hurt Board quickly recommended to the British Admiralty that lemon juice be issued as a daily ration to the crews on all British warships in the future. Gilbert Blaine was appointed as the commissioner to the Sick and Hurt Board in 1795 and used his experience with the results Gardner had shown to persuade the Admiralty to issue lemon juice as a daily ration to the entire Royal Navy fleet. Almost overnight, scurvy became a thing of the past. In time, science identified that scurvy was not a disease or ailment, but in fact a deficiency in vitamin C caused by a lack of fresh fruit and vegetables. Today's episode was brought to you by Keeps. Did you know two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Get treated from home. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your home. They make it easy and deliver your medications every three months, so you can say goodbye to pharmacy checkout lines and awkward doctor visits. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. You may have tried them before, but probably never for this price. Prevention is key. Keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to see results, so it's important to act fast. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why over 100,000 men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention medication. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash simple history or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash simple history.